So for this, we have a midterm review here. Number 35 is looking at a volume density type problem, which was from their first chapter this year. So what we have is a rectangular prism, a tank that's in a rectangular prism. So we'll try to draw one of those the best we can. 35 inch length, 20 inch height, uh, 25 inch width. Okay, so this one's, uh, somehow we're gonna convert this volume in inches cubed cubic inches, we're going to have to somehow convert volume in inches cubed to gallons. Okay, so there's probably a quick easy one if you look up on the internet, but we don't have access to that on the test. So we're going to have to work for it. What I did was I clipped the math uh, reference sheet here, and this is pretty complex. I see gallons is related to quartz which is related to cups, fluid ounces. We don't have any of those. Gallons is also related to liters and cubic centimeters. So these are all of the surprising, these are all the conversions we're going to have to use for this problem. Uh, it's not going to be easy at all. So one way we could do it is we could change all of the measurements in inches over to centimeters. Uh, that's not the most efficient way, but I think that's the best way to go. So I'm going to do that. Uh, I'm going to take 25 or 2.54 centimeters. Here's how I do it. 25 inches is, I always do proportions. So it's X in centimeters, right? Then I take this conversion. When I do When I do my problems with proportions and ratios, I'll keep units of measure consistent. Now this is again different probably than a lot of teachers go, but I like doing it this way. It just seems once we learn uh, proportions and similarity, this is going to be really uh, effective. So if you notice, I've got inches over centimeters in both fractions. Uh, I'm going to cross multiply. So for this, I get. I'm going to ignore the, you know, the units of measure for one minute. So x equals whatever 25 times 2.54 is. So let me just quick type that in the calculator. 25 times 2.54. So this one's going to convert to 63.5. Um, technically, that's our what? Width? Yeah, let's go with width here. Change that to width. All right. So we're going to say that's 63.5 centimeters is the conversion. All right, let's keep going. So now we got to do the same process. We'll speed it up a little bit for uh, yeah, uh, the rest. Now we're going to change the length. Okay, so we'll say the length in centimeters. Same conversion, one inch to two and a half, or 2.54 centimeters. Cross multiply, whatever 35 times 2.54 is. And... Then the last conversion is going to be for the height. Okay, so 20 inches over H for height. So convert it to centimeters. One inch over 2.54 centimeters. Cross multiply. The height is going to turn into whatever 20 times 2.54 is. So I'll go get those uh, numbers and then we'll... So the length conversion we've got is 88.9, uh, and again, that turned into centimeters. The height conversion, 50.8 uh, in centimeters. So let's convert those. 88.9, 50.8. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to get the volume. We're going to, instead of getting inches cubed, we're going to get centimeters cubed. So uh, the volume for a prism, they'll give you the formula B times H. And the B really is the area of the base. Now let's make this simple. Because it's a rectangular prism, we know that it's length times width times height. Okay, why don't we just give that? Well, prisms are more than just rectangular prisms. The length times width is really the area of the base. So what we have is 
the volume is going to be the 88.9 times the 63.5 number and then the 50.8. Let's use all the centimeter. Technically, these are all centimeters. Okay? So each one of them is. All right? So we'll get that number real quick. 88.9 times 63.5 times 50.8. All right, we're looking at... 28673.62. There's probably more after that, too. Okay, and then that's going to be centimeters cubed. We're still not there. We're not to gallons yet, but we're getting there. Uh, what we can do is we can take this number that is in centimeters cubed, and we can convert it to, we'll call it x liters. L for liters, and um, now on the other fraction, what we need is consistent units of measure, 1,000 uh, cubic centimeters to one liter. Okay, we'll cross multiply, 1,000x, get rid of, forget the uh, units of measure just for a minute. Uh, don't do that in the science class, but we'll get away with it here. Um, divide by 1,000. That's really all this is telling you to do. Um, some folks will know how to do it without actually doing the proportions. Um, then I guess you don't need this. But this is a way to make sure you're not guessing whether to multiply or divide. When we convert, uh, we'll just move the decimal in this case. Okay, move it three places. All right, that's how many liters we have. All right, we got to convert that now to gallons. So, same thing, let's just put that number down. And we want to turn it into, I already used X, so Y uh, gallons. The conversion for gallons is every 3.75 liters is one gallon. Um, and just notice, like, I, I take these numbers, see what I'm doing is, and then I'm just using, I'm taking the one gallon and I'm putting it in the same position, the bottom as the gallons in this one. Okay, so kind of tells me what to do instead of me having to, you know, think about should I multiply or should I divide. Now to cross multiply, I've got 3.785y equals 286 point that number. All right, and I'm going to then divide both sides by 3.785 and that's just going to get me 75.765.8 and that's finally converted to gallons. Now let's make sure that that even seems reasonable. 35 is about 358. Okay. It could be. Is that many gallons? I'm going to double check that. I apologize. I did have the wrong number in there. Um, I forgot to divide by 1,000. All right. This is more reasonable. Let me back that up. Um, that was, I had the wrong number in my calculator. It should have been 75.7658. Uh, Okay, much better. Uh, that's how many gallons it is. 75 seems much more reasonable. Um, now, what do we need? Okay, now we need the weight. Oh, nearest hundredth, so let's let's get that locked in. 75.77 uh, gallons. Hundredth is two places. Okay. Now we'll get the weight. Come over here and get the weight. Let's write down the conversion they give us. Six zero seven three pounds per gallon. Six point zero seven three pounds per gallon. And we want to be eighty five percent full. All right, that's interesting. All right, so what I'll do is I'll convert the gallons to pounds and then 
or you know what, let's do the 85% right now. So 85% of 75, 77 gallons. Okay, so really all you're going to do is multiply. So 0 0.85 times 75, 77. Uh, that's one way to go that you could use proportions again if you'd like. If that's better for you, go ahead and do that. I went and grabbed the old answer, the not rounded answer, and I got um, so 85% full leaves us with 64.4009 uh, gallons. Now let's convert that to pounds. There we go. I put this number on top, and I want to get to pounds, so we'll call it, we already used X, so Z pounds. Other side, um, 6.073 pounds on the bottom, one gallon on the top, that's what that means. Cross multiply, and Z is whatever, 64.4009 times 6.073 is. Wow, a lot of work on this problem. Supposed to be 391.107 pounds. Is there a rounding? Gallons to the nearest. Um, how much will a tank weigh? 85% full. Okay. Uh, didn't say what to round to, so let's just go with the same hundredths like the other ones did. Uh, we'll say 391.11 pounds. Okay. So that's your two answers. Wow, a lot of work. All right, that was a full video for one problem, but uh, we needed to do it, and I will continue with the, on the next video.